rising over the battlefield is a new type of tank. It's so unique that even the word tank might no longer apply. It's a new type of terrifying armored machine. With six guns and no weak armor points, it's pretty invincible. And the best part is, it hops. Wait, hold on. Sorry, everyone. Uh, what do you mean it hops? Can we just pause this for a second? Yes, you're thinking, Nick, you finally lost the plot there at Found It Explained. Too much jet fuel. But no, this is a real concept from a real engineer that was actually proposed. And I know it's going to make you lose your minds. So before you write in the comments, fake news, let's deep dive into the insanity that is the floating pillbox, the hopping tank. Nothing gets bullets flying and wallets opening than a good old world war, and the second edition was no exception. Billions of hard-earned US currency was spent inventing all sorts of new ways of killing people, from machines to guns to planes and even flying hoverbikes. But it's not just the big corporations getting in on the action, but also individual citizens. Enter our hero of the story, Henry Wallace. Now, honestly, we don't know a ton about this madman, but we do know that he was from Freeport, New York, and had only submitted one other patent before this one. One for a pen that could wrap around the wrist, which actually would be pretty useful. But it's the second patent that gets a video made about it, the hopping tank. The floating pillbox, or the hopping tank, would instantly eliminate the two previous flaws of tracked tanks. First, there would be no front. Armor would be split equally around, and there would be no weak points. There would also be six cannons arranged around a circle at 45 degrees, each able to separately aim and fire at various targets. This would make the tank the ultimate defensive platform able to sit at a location, such as a crossroads, and ensure that the enemy paused their advance. In the middle, there would be a power driver, an unnamed diesel engine, and a gyroscopic stabilization device located around the center of gravity consisting of two oppositional gyroscopes. For balance, of course, but we'll get to that in a second. On top, there would be a commander position who would drive the tank forward. This little compartment could rotate separately, useful if the motion was in one direction or if it needed to scout the battlefield for firing solutions. The patent doesn't exactly break down how many crew would be required, but with a loader and gunner for each weapon and the driver themselves, you'd be looking at 8 to 13 crew at least. But I hear what you're thinking. It's only useful if this thing can move, and we have to talk about its singular leg. As mentioned, Wallace hated how tanks could only move in one direction without turning, and thought why not make essentially a queen chess piece in real life? Using its one leg, the tank would hop around in any direction whilst firing its cannons. It could retreat, advance, or flank enemy positions at a moment's notice. Plus, it could leap over rivers, buildings, and enemy fortifications with ease. Kind of. Let's actually talk about how this would work in real life. Now, this tank, air quotes, was designed around the idea of fixing the flaws of existing armoured vehicles. For one, the direction of movement of a traditional tank is limited by the track's direction. A tank can't move sideways. In addition, a tank has more armor on the front, with the rear being a weak point. Combining these points and you realize that a tank needs to expose its, again air quotes, soft underbelly every time it moves. Plus, a tank can only fire in one direction, or turning its turret to face a singular threat. So now you have to split the armor protection with both the front and the turret, costing you valuable weight. Now at first this design looks like a one-legged tank, but it's not actually possible to move around without hopping, something that you need a second foot for. This is where the design gets rather brilliant. The tank itself was actually the second foot. To move in any direction, the leg would slowly move out horizontally onto the tank and then extend upwards, lifting the tank back over its center, collapsing in the process. The tank would essentially move more like a slug than a pogo stick. 
But don't be disappointed as this was just the first version, with additional paint and drawings showing an actual leaping motion if enough force was applied. So you bet that the second version was going to hop around like a kangaroo. There would be four wheels around the central leg that would allow this version to move in any direction, and when it came to extend, it would not be hydraulic, but the leg would actually use explosive expansion of gas to shoot out. Fuel would be injected into the top of the hollow leg and then detonated, rapidly expanding the leg down and lifting the tank up. A huge advantage of this was that the tank was impossible to dislodge and the leg never extended enough to reveal its direction and was protected by the armor. But it also would have been rather slow around walking speed, but in the middle of a battlefield it would be incredibly intimidating to the enemy. But come on guys, you're watching this and you know that I'm just ready to dive into the floors, and boy, there are a lot of them. Okay, straight up everyone watching, it's a dumb idea, I get that, but we need to pretend that we're actually the US military and give this some serious concrete reasons why it wouldn't work. First of all, the poor crew. Can you imagine riding on an explosive pogo stick? Imagine when it slammed down on the ground every 10 seconds. Even if it didn't leap around like a pogo stick, the vibrations alone would make someone sick in minutes. Plus, this tank would have had the same practicalities as a lawn dart. By having a single leg being the point of impact with the ground, the heavy weight wouldn't lift up the body, rather the leg would be driven down into the ground. That's why tanks have such a large surface area with the treads. If this leg sank into the ground with explosive force, then the whole thing could tip sideways. And yes, tipping over was a problem with this design, which is another obvious flaw. If this tank was on anything but a hard, flat surface, it could easily fall sideways and roll away. Now the patent does mention that the leg did have a small joint, meaning that it could handle angles up to a surface of 10 degrees, but anything more than that and it would tip over. And I'm not even mentioning what happens if it's windy or it's muddy, slippery ground. But wait, there's more. We also need to talk about the armor. The design of the single leg was actually more restricted with weight than a normal tank, and its armor design would only stand up to light arms fire. If a rocket, or god forbid a real tank as God intended fired upon it, it would go up like a candle. The guns arranged around the center of the tank were also more of a flaw than an advantage. At best, only two guns could fire onto an enemy to the front, meaning two thirds were useless, and the tank had no real quick way to rotate on the spot, barely able to track targets. There was also a blind spot in between each of the small cannons. This would have been solved with a simple rotating turret, just like on a real tank. At the end of the day, Tanks Encyclopedia, used as a source for this video today, summed it up perfectly. Weakly protected for a static pillbox, poorly protected for such a visible tank, and oddly armoured for a fighting vehicle, this design was particularly bad when it came to motion. This was the least practical design for a tank ever made, but Wallace wins the award for imagination. I kind of wish that they could have recruited him to see what else he would have come up with, because this guy was truly nuts. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments.